Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Bent TV. This is the talk where we essentially talk about issues that affect uh, sex and gender diverse young people. You know, parents give, or a lot of people think that parents give their children, you know, the talk when they're younger about sex or the birds and the bees, um, but that's usually reserved exclusively for straight people, and queer people don't really get that at all. Um, so I thought we'd just talk about issues that uh, affect young queer people. Um, so today I'm joined by Michael, Jasmine, and Chrissy. Um, and we're just going to focus on a particular topic today um, and just discuss it. So today we're talking about this idea about stereotypes, more particularly about the idea about people having a gaydar. So I guess I just wanted to ask you guys, you know, uh, is the idea of a gaydar legitimate? Like, you know, can people actually have a gaydar um, or does it just, is this just a way of pandering to stereotypes? <laughs> I think, I, yeah, I totally think a gaydar is a thing. Like, I think it's kind of, I think there's like, myth in the gay community where like, oh, like, you know, you can't tell if someone's gay, like, you know, like, and you just see like the swishiest queen and you're just like, no, like, he could be straight. And it's just like, okay, like, gay, like, mannerisms, like, exist, like, it's, and it's okay. And I feel like this is like underlying homophobia about that as well, where it's like, you know, like, I can say that, like, my voice kind of reads as gay, like, the way I kind of move my hands, like, mm. right now is like gay, the way I walk is gay. And I think it's, but it's okay, like, there's nothing wrong with me walking or sounding gay. And, like, you know, like, you know, you grow up in, like, policing these things. Like, we're totally aware of it. Like, I was aware that my voice was gay and I walked gaily or whatever, and it was trying to police that, but... Well, then, to play a devil's advocate, in that instance, like, for someone... If someone had those attributes that would be considered, perhaps, stereotypically gay, um, but they weren't gay, um, mm -hmm. does that make the idea of, you know, seeing someone that way, even if they potentially might not be problematic, or is that still... I, 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 yes, gaydar exists. Um, my thing is that people like, get offended by the notion of gaydar. I feel like it's all about this whole um, homophobia. Yeah, it's homophobia, that's what it is. Like, there should, if, if you're not gay and I read you as gay, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be offended. Why are you being offended that's that right. I think you're gay? Yeah. That to me is what it comes down to. Because yeah, if you see a straight man wearing a pink t-shirt, unfortunately we live in a society where men are not allowed to like pink, the color mm -hmm. pink. Um, in fact, one of my brothers growing up loved the color pink. Um, until he was told that that's not what a, a, a boy should like. So he you know, immediately stopped liking that. But what I was trying to say is that if someone's wearing pink and you read them as, pink, as, as, as being gay um, and he's not gay, why, why are you going to get offended? Take why? it as a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. Why does it matter? So yeah. I, think, I think that's what it comes down to. But you're right. You're totally right. We do, when we, a lot of the times, when you are say, oh, I think he's gay, you are kind of picking up on stereotypes, mm -hmm. which do have some truth to it. Exactly, and there's nothing wrong with those mm -hmm. particular stereotypes. Yeah. Like, as I said, there's nothing wrong with like kind of acting or sounding gay. Mm -hmm. You know, so why is it a bad thing if someone reads mm -hmm. you as gay? But it, it is also like a kind of a survival technique. This like gator of like picking up these little things of like not just policing yourself of like how do I pass as straight or cisgender or, or whatever mm -hmm. in order to kind of navigate this heterosexist mm -hmm. world. Like. Um, it's also like kind of reading other people as like same as you, mm -hmm. you know, so you can like kind of create this community. Um, what do you think, Jasmine? I mean, even I, mean, I was referring specifically to like gay men, you know, this idea of a gay dub, but even more broadly, you know, oh, women, gosh. you know, identifying someone that you don't even know as perhaps lesbian or just or just not straight. Um, I do think it exists, of course. Um, I do. I find issue with it when it comes to femme women. Women, femme yeah. visibility is a real thing. Yeah, so people true. won't look at me and think, oh, like she's gay. Like mm -hmm. unless I purposefully, like pick out someone I was interested in and try to like prolong eye contact and like do all the things that like lesbians are supposed to do when it comes to like making yourself known. Because yeah. I don't rock rainbow. I don't rock mm -hmm. like not butch, obviously. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think I'm often overlooked and um, pretty invisible when it comes to people's gaydars, whenever I like introduce my, my girlfriend or say like I'll you know, come out to someone, they're like, oh, like I wouldn't have pegged you as mm. yeah. as as being that way. It's okay with me, you know. And yeah. I mean is um, that kind of problematic? Because that, that can apply to gay men as well. If someone doesn't identify as being stereotypical, I myself I wear very colorful clothing, I'm very camp, very out there. Someone who isn't like that, someone who perhaps wouldn't be seen wouldn't someone wouldn't assume is gay, mm. that kind of surprise at finding out that they are like, you know, what I and mean, that can be quite problematic. I, right. I feel like the problem is in Gator. I feel like the problem is representation in media on every level about the diversity within the, queer, com the mm -hmm. queer community. So, like when you look at a like a gay guy in, in TV, he's always the same, you know, camp white skinny mm -hmm. young male. Like we need to have more diversity mean, yes, so that so someone <laughs> like Jasmine isn't seen as invisible. Like no one's surprised when Jasmine's like, yeah, I'm gay. 
because we need to see more types mm. like and it's it comes it's a lot of things it's not just like race and physical and how you move and behave but it's your interests you know um, gay dudes that are into like watching I don't know like race cars as opposed to watching I don't know I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys watch? <laughs> I think what you mentioned earlier. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think what you mentioned earlier is really spot on, though, about the idea that I guess you know um, people shouldn't be offended by the idea of you know because mm -hmm. I've, I've encountered people before. I mean, I've dated people who see the idea of me saying, "Oh, that person," I think that person's gay, as yeah. being very like yeah. like a no no. Like you know, you shouldn't yeah. say that. That's really uh, detrimental, and negative. Yeah. Um, because it almost implies that to assume that to think someone is gay is is a bad thing, you mm -hmm. know. Like to be gay is a bad thing, you know, mm -hmm. by extension. So I, I completely agree with that. Because like there'll be times when I'll say, "Oh, I think he might be gay," and someone will be like, "Oh, why? What what what, what makes you think he's gay?" Mm -hmm. But if I said that about a straight person, "Oh, I think he's straight," no one's gonna ask. Oh, can yeah. you justify? <laughs> Yeah. Like, can you tell me why you think it's straight? So yeah, I think it comes. It's down also to like that. a survival thing as well. When like you know, gay people get like kind of as you're saying, like pegged as like gay or lesbian. It's like oh, I'm, like, being read as that by straight people, specifically. Like, as me, like, a gay guy, I can, like, you know, look at a gay guy and be like, yeah, sure, he's gay, like, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, if a straight person is now, like, reading these, like, gay people as gay, it can be kind of, like, it can be kind of a scary thing, where it's, like, am I, like... Because you want to kind of control how you're outing yourself mm -hmm. to straight people, mm -hmm. and then if you find out that you're doing it just by literally standing there, or, like, mm -hmm. walking, or mm -hmm. talking, or whatever it is, it's, like, it's a bit scary, because it's out of your control. Yeah. I think earlier on, maybe when I was younger, I didn't, I, like the way I presented perhaps wasn't as camp, but I think now that I'm aware that, you know, this very much identifies yeah, myself totally. to strangers, I actually feel like I own that, like I actually really yeah. enjoy that. I like yeah. the idea of being in a public space and people being very aware that I'm not, you know, heterosexual, like, I shouldn't say heterosexual because I didn't say that, I assume that, but like, you know, I, I like the idea of outwardly presenting as that without even having to say anything. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that, okay, like the idea of a gaydar, as much as this name might suggest it's a bit silly, like is quite... Legitimate and act, yeah. you know, in many instances. Um, but yeah, thank oh. you so much, everyone. Oh, did you have anything else to add, Chrissy? Yes. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining me today. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us on the talk. Um, and we'll see you next time on Bent TV.